Hi, my name is Jerome Raft. I'm a sculptor at Pixar Animation Studios, and I'd like to sculpt the character for you today. I'm going to sculpt Lightning McQueen from Cars. Let's get started. So I built an armature. So it's basically a couple boards, and I've screwed some screws into the board. I do that so the clay has something to grab onto. I also have some wire here. It's about eighth or sixteenth inch wire. I'm just going to wrap it around these screws. So that's it. That's my armature. I've drawn a silhouette on this board looking down on McQueen from the top. And then I cut a silhouette of that drawing which could be out of almost any material. In this case, mat board. Here's the back of McQueen, the greenhouse at the top of the car. It's where his eyes will be. This is the hood. And I want to emphasize to you guys, make sure you have adult supervision when you attempt anything like this. Let's get started. So now I'm gonna start pushing the clay into those wires and around those screws. And this stage is called roughing out. I'm just trying to put enough clay so it'll make the 3D form of Lightning McQueen. The clay I'm using is a plasticine clay. It never dries out. It's not like water-based clay or ceramic clay. And for it to move this quickly, it needs to be put in an oven. When it's at room temperature, it's relatively hard. And now is the part where I'm really gonna start adding smaller bits of clay and just fine tune that surface so it just meets the template of this mat board. This is a wooden sculpting tool. I know it looks a little sharp, but it is not. And I wanna remind you when you're sculpting, you need to be careful and do it only under adult supervision. Sculpting over the years has taught me that if I follow the method of going from rough complex, it always happens faster. And I suggest that if you're interested in sculpting, that you should try sculpting a car. Try sculpting mechanical objects. It's really challenging and really, really fun. Every car on the road is just a moving sculpture. Someone had to sculpt it, design it, and make it. Now I know I'm too far out here and I know it needs to come in from the top. McQueen has an hourglass shape. He's narrow in the front, comes out with those front fenders, and then there's a very tight area in the middle we call the waist, and then the back fenders, or the rear quarter panels, are wider than the front fenders. I'm already gonna start trying to make that something that I could see in the clay. You're gonna see me start putting a bunch of lines in. The lines are just for me to delineate where the windshield is, where the side windows are, just so I could start thinking about where those lines are eventually gonna end up. I could actually take a line like that that's coming off the center, measure it, and then measure the same distance off the center to make sure that both these sides are even. And before I get rid of this template, back here, there's this underneath space that actually is in the side. I haven't really established that. And since it's in the template, I'm gonna establish that and I'm doing that by just cutting out this big chunk of clay that I don't need there. There we go. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this template. I have a lot of clamps holding it together. I'm gonna pull these two angles. Now I'm still gonna use this template, but now it's a little easier to see from one side to the other. Now I can pull this template off and I can always put it back on. In fact, if I cut this little piece here that goes underneath the back, it's gonna be easier for it to come on and off. There we go. Now we can work on it as a whole. And I'll just draw a center line with my tool. It's not exact, I'm just putting a line in. When I look at a car, it breaks up. For me, visually, there's the lower part of the body and the upper part, or the cab, or the greenhouse, or the cockpit, or the passenger area. And that's really what I'm trying to do in this rough out, is to find the difference for myself accurately between those two shapes. 
Once you see that something's off, I like to just do it quickly. And another thing I do all the time is when the clay is rough and it has all this sort of visual noise all over the place, I often will just go over it with my finger or a tool and smooth things out. I just want to get a look at the surface and what it's doing. When it's covered by all this sort of visual noise with uneven rough surfaces, it's hard to evaluate what you have. I like to establish one side and then try to make it symmetrical using a bunch of different tools. And I'm going to just take a little bit of material from underneath. This tool is called a rake. All right, now the way I would determine whether this was happening accurately or not is I would take a pair of calipers, measure from the front to the hub of the first wheel, the hub from one wheel to the next, Establish those two and see if the hub of the rear wheel to the bumper is looking correct. That all looks pretty correct. So what I would do now, I made this little circle template that represents the size of his wheels. Put it on the clay and all I'm doing is pushing it on the clay and then I'm going to take a tool and score a line all the way around it just for rough wheel placement. I'm going to do the same to the back. And these may or may not be in the right place. I'm just scoring them in for now, just to have a look seed, just to see how it looks. He's very low to the ground. So I'm just gonna take this tool, which is a rake tool, by the way, which I'll be using a lot more later to really clean up these surfaces. But since I'm roughing out right now, I'm not using these. And I'll just take a thin band of clay out from between the tires. Now, where this is in space and this is in space, aren't the same. But if I go here and take a measurement and just use that board as a guide, lean it in there, this gives me where I wanna be if I don't move them. Just from looking where that was, it means I need a lot of this to go away. And I can tell you, I'm not interested in finding any details right now. I'm still working on the overall form and how all these overall shapes work together. I know I'll be rounding these corners more, rounding this out and putting in detail the windshield, A pillars, B pillars, defining the sign windows. This is a structure pass. I'm gonna start by carving this side down a little more. I like what's happening back and forth. Using this rake helps really flatten that surface out. It helps me see what a flat surface should look like. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty close. This is a pin gauge. These pins easily move in and out. This is how I'm gonna check that this side is very, very close to this side. I like this side. This side is much rougher. But I'm gonna start by pressing this against the clay. Now I'll try to find the exact same spot on the opposite side. And you can see that profile looks pretty close. I think I'm missing some material in here. And my fake wheel is further in on this side. I'll take another measurement right at the beginning of the windshield. Can you see that? There's a gap right here, right there, that I need to fill. A pin gauge is a wonderful tool. It helps me mirror one side to the next side. This is, I guess, the balancing stage where I'm trying to balance one side to the next before I start really smoothing things out and really start trying to refine these shapes. So what am I doing now? I am going to push these surfaces in. So I've found all these exterior surfaces of McQueen. 
except for under here. There's a surface under there and I haven't messed with that at all. Because I've scribed these lines in, I can now scrape off a layer of clay, pushing that surface in to be where the actual tire and rim are. I'm gonna have to use another tool. This is a potter's tool. It's a very dull tool, but again, it's a tool that you should only use under adult supervision. So I'm essentially carving the tires. There's a gap between the top of the tire and the fender too, and I'm just taking out this little wedge of material between here and the tire, creating that shadow, and it makes it look a lot better, I think. Structure phase is over. We did a symmetry pass. I'd call this the beginning of a smoothing pass. And now the cleaner and cleaner it gets, inconsistencies from side to side become more apparent. So essentially what I'm doing is knocking down all the high spots and making a more even surface. And what's really nice about this is you can really see how nice and smooth those transitions are from highlight to shadow. This is all part of the refining pass, and it's where I'll be making lots of little, little changes, and then I'll proceed to a finishing pass. So now that I've raked the entire surface of the car, I'll come back with the back side of this tool. This side's flat and a little concaved, and this is convex and much rounder this way. And I'll be using that rounded side and just slowly push all those little crosshatch marks I made down. And then the real trick, I will take my finger, usually this finger or this finger, never these two, and I'll just push it on the surface. Just smooth out that surface. And now I could come back with the rake, just going over these tires, trying to clean them up. I wanna get the wheels to, the, to a state where they look like the rest of McQueen. There's a bunch of clay. I don't know if you can see under there, but underneath it's pretty sloppy. There's still a lot of clay under there. And if I come along with this tool, which is much thinner, and just dig in and pull a lot of that clay out of there, it creates a nice dark shadow underneath the car and makes it look like the clay is just resting on the tires. I think I need to take my template, which I've drawn a circle to represent where the rim will be. And there's a pretty good size hole in the middle where I can just take this caliper and mark where that hole is. I've brought out a small wire tool where I'll go around the outside of this tire and make it a little more true. And we'll just pop it off. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, another bit of detail. Now that I want to find the rim, I cut out another piece that's the same size as this smaller hole there. And because I've put a little center dot, I can place this very simply by just putting it in the existing dot and pushing it in place. And then if I take my little wire tool, I can trace it. And this is a pretty safe tool. This is just a wire, a little round loop wire. There we go. Now, the kind of fun part Another loop tool. I just dig that out and just take a little bit out. So now busy work. I'm gonna have to do that another three times. This is a kidney tool, a metal kidney tool, and a plastic kidney tool. When you want a surface to be really, really flat, you can drag this across the surface and take off just the high spots. I think I would need smaller ones to get into all the nooks and crannies on the queen's body. This is a plastic version of the same tool. I sanded this edge down till it was really, really smooth. You can go back over that same surface and just drag this across. And when I pull my finger across it, it is very flat. And to smooth out these little crevices here, a very small tool to get in there. This would be the detail phase. I'm gonna take a brush and we're gonna take some, what I'm gonna call water, and we're gonna brush this down. This does smooth things out quite a bit. I want it to feel like it all has the same amount of finish on it. 
I've cut some paper towels. This is just household paper towel. This blue is a shop towel. This has a little texture. It's a little bit abrasive and it almost acts like sandpaper. So if you put some of this water on it and go over the surface and boy, every little flaw comes out once you wipe it down. I think we are done with the rough out and smooth out pass. We're getting very close to doing hyper detail. For me to get underneath to all these areas under here and clean it up, I have to work with the sculpture sitting in my lap. And at this angle, I can really see these surfaces. I have a little pile of clay on this piece of plywood and I'm just grabbing little chunks of it with my tool and putting it into place. It's so tight in there, my fingers could never fit in there, so I definitely need a smaller tool to push the clay around until it looks right. Now I'm going to add the spoiler. I have here a piece of plastic sheet. This is polystyrene. McQueen has a spoiler on the back and it's the last part of this that's gonna really help make him look correct. I'm going to take this piece of plastic and I'm just gonna trace along the outside of this with a pencil. That's the trace of what the profile of the back of this Clay McQueen looks like. So I looked at some reference and I've drawn a spoiler for McQueen. I'm just gonna cut out the profile. I probably should cut this line a little short of where I've drawn it because I'm gonna end up covering this with clay. So for this lower line, I'm gonna cut it a little bit long. I need something to push into the clay so it holds. I'm gonna just use a file to clean up that edge. I don't like filing this plastic around my clay because it creates fine dust that always ends up sticking to my clay. And to put this in place, I'm gonna damage what I've spent all this time cleaning up. I'm gonna push it down until that line meets the surface of the clay. Adding this little level of detail means I am at the finish stage. And then I take clay and I squish it out really, really smooth and flat. And I just apply it to the surface of this plastic and I use a tool to press it into place. I have to use this piece of plastic because if I tried to make a thin sheet of clay without anything rigid in it or hard like this piece of plastic, it would just flop all around. Okay, what I want to do now is rough in a mouth. So I'm just going to decide where the corners are. This is my favorite part, by the way. So I just placed two dots on the face and I'm going to give myself a line where the lips I'm going to take some of this clay and I'm going to roll it out into a coil and add a lower lip. There's a little extra right there and I'm just going to cut it off. Sloppy but getting there. I'm just going to fill that in a little bit and then once I fill it I need to smooth out and even out that material I've just added. I added some material on the upper lip and I'm trying to smoothly transition it into the hood. And that smile's looking pretty good, I think. And now I want to scribe the top of McQueen's eyes. So you see that? I put a line in on top. And now we need to scribe the side windows. McQueen's windshield is set back in space. This is a clay extruder. It has a shape in front. You put the hot clay in the back and you squeeze it out the front and you end up with this long strip of clay that's in a very even regular shape. Cut it into a strip. And I just take the clay and wrap it around those lines I scribed. There, now we have an inset windshield creates a little shadow right there. The little amount of relief I'm looking for. And I'm taking this top edge and just pushing it back into the roof of the car. I'm gonna scribe in the back windshield right now. The back windshield is flat, so I don't need to do what I did on the side windows and the front window. And the next thing I wanna do is scribe the eyelids. 
And I'm going to lay that right against those lines. And I'm gonna clean this up the same way I cleaned up the windows. I'm gonna place the eyes. And I call this making sure someone's home. And that's that. This is as far as I would take this to go to an art review or to be to have my boss look at it for the first time. Thank you for joining me on this adventure as I sculpted Lightning McQueen. I hope you had a good time.